Thank you, Mr. President. I agree with a lot of different people who've spoken today on the floor um, and certainly different parts of it. You know, I, I came in with the senator from Christian and agree with a lot of what he said today. Um, I certainly agree on the fact that we need to tackle poverty and generational poverty in Kentucky. And while I understand that's part of the discussion today, I don't think it's necessarily part of the debate. If it is part of the debate, I want to start talking about raising the minimum wage, investing in education, providing health care, and really getting into big, bold initiatives of job training and, and getting, breaking the generations and cycles of poverty. What I do want to talk about, though, is how the debate has been framed today about historic horse racing. First thing that was said is it's not constitutional. Let me just point out that I have done this before and I will do it again. When those of us on this floor say something is constitutional or unconstitutional, that's an opinion. A people in a separate but equal branch of government actually get to decide whether something is constitutional. And what the Supreme Court has said in this instance is that they're going to allow historic horse racing if we make some legislative changes. That's why we're here. And when we talk about what's going to happen if we allow historic horse racing, let's reframe this debate. We've had historic horse racing for 10 years. We've not seen the problems that have been forecast here on the floor. We're not deciding whether we want historic horse racing in Kentucky. It's here. We're deciding whether we want to keep historic horse racing in Kentucky. And all of the jobs and all of the help in the industry that goes along with it. Yes, we have two signature industries in Kentucky. I didn't choose them. They were here long before me. We are known worldwide for our horse racing and our bourbon. We had a distillery in Kentucky that was looking to lose 1,400 jobs across this state because the court made a decision that said needed legislative action. We'd be on this floor acting. If any other industry did the same thing, that's the position we would be in. The fact is this has 1,400 jobs and it does help an industry thrive. This is a decision that was put on us by the courts because of a decision they made, whether we agree with it or not. And so we have to come here today and make the decision. That decision isn't one that is that you're voting against poverty if you vote against this. Again, historic horse racing has been here for 10 years. I'm going to continue to work to end generational poverty. I'm going to continue to work for a tax structure that is more fair than the one we have right now on our working poor. I'm going to continue to work on this bill because I don't think the tax structure is fair on historical horse racing. And I think we need to generate more revenue from it than is currently being generated. People in this chamber know, but for those watching, the only reason we're not fighting to amend this bill is because we can't. Revenue raising measures cannot start in the Senate, and this is a Senate bill. So I just want to make sure the debate is clear on this. We're not enacting historical horse racing in Kentucky. It's been here. What we're doing is deciding whether we're going to keep it, whether we're going to keep an industry that goes along with it, and whether we're going to work as a legislature to pass the meaningful priorities which will truly help the downtrodden in Kentucky.